I want to welcome everybody to All About Apps. We have a couple more seats on the side there if you're coming in. Yeah, you can walk right in front, no worries. Now, you don't want to sit on that seat, trust me. Uh, but I want to welcome everybody to All About Apps. My name is Richard. I'm the iLaunch Manager on board. <coughs> Woo, and I got the cough too. Uh, the origins of this class are actually very, very interesting. Because when I started with Celebrity six and a half, almost seven years ago, I started on this ship, and we would teach classes in the I Lounge, and people would come, and I was the only one on the ship with this iPad. The only person that has, I love my iPad case. <laughs> Best iPad case ever. It's got like a baseball glove on the back. It's got a stand. And best of all, a built-in bottle opener. <laughs> That's a story for another day, though. But what we would do is we would teach the classes in the I Lounge. People would call guest relations and go, the I Lounge is closed and no one's in it. Well, there were, but there were four of us behind the little wall there because no one else was interested in technology. And you can see how it's grown. So today we are going to talk about apps. How many of you have apps installed on your device? Now, apps are very interesting things. They are not websites. I think this is the thing that a lot of people are confused with. These devices are not designed for browsing the web. Safari is there in case of an emergency. Chrome is there on your phone in case of an emergency. It's not there for everyday usage. For web browsing, you use a computer. You use a computer. I mean, that's the idea. So when you want to do something specifically, you go to an app. And apps are going to become even more important for celebrity if you know anything about the Edge class of ships, because it's all going to work with an app. You're able to press drinks. You're able to control your balcony. You're able to do all that right inside of an app. So I want to go ahead and talk about apps. And then we're going to go a little bit deeper into some apps. Now, this is the App Store. On an iPhone or iPad, it's a big capital A. On an Android device, it's a P for the Google Play Store. On a Kindle, you've got the Kindle App Store. And on a Blackberry, oh, that's, no, don't worry about that. Uh, <laughs> anybody have a Blackberry? Yeah. yeah, where? Where are you? Are you Canadian? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ta da! My point is exactly. The last people still sporting Blackberry. But uh, even Blackberries are starting to run Android now. But this is the App Store. And people ask me all the time, hey, Rich, how do you find new apps? How do you find all these apps? Now, you've got to realize in the Apple App Store alone, there are over 5 million apps. In my lifetime, I've probably downloaded about 10 or 12,000 apps. Now, most of you have downloaded maybe 100 apps, but over my history, I've downloaded 10 to 12,000 different apps. And here's what's really cool. All of these app stores have a curated page, being a front page that gives you an idea of what goes on in the app store. And what are they advertising now? Uh, well, you know, summer's coming up. People want to get to the beach and not be bad. Um, I had to give up on my medium shirt yesterday. I've gone back to the large. Uh, I had two very bad cruises, so I kind of need this. But here's the cool thing. The featured page shows you all kinds of different things that are featured in that specific point in time. So I always like to use the February example. What happens in the middle of February? Valentine's Day. It snows. I'm from Miami. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, what happens in the middle of February is Valentine's Day. But you know what happens at the beginning of February? Online dating applications spike because nobody wants to be single on Valentine's Day. So what you'll see is in the beginning of February, you'll see all kinds of online dating applications shown in the featured section. About February 10th, you're going to see online flower buying applications. And what comes in the end of February? No, 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 no. Divorce season. <laughs> that is actually the highest, I, I kid you not, that is the highest time of year for divorces is late February because people mess up Valentine's Day. <laughs> they mess up Valentine's Day, and what shows up here are is legal Zoom and other legal paperwork applications. Nowadays, you're seeing things that are related to the summer that's coming soon. But what I think is very important is if you look at this main page, we have our featured section. We also have something on most of the app stores called the free app of the week. And this week it's something called Clock. I'm not sure what it is, but this is the free app of the week. And what the free app of the week is, is it's something that's on the front page. You've probably never seen it before. You have to scroll down a little bit. And it's an app that normally costs money that Apple pays for for that week. So Apple actually pays for you to have that app. And once you get it, you get to keep it forever. So if I say get, I can say get, and it will go ahead and it'll say, okay, put in your password, which I'm not going to do right now. But I can go in, and this is the featured section. So when something new comes out, take for example, if any of you have an iPad Pro, there's something called the Apple Pencil. Now I got an Apple Pencil when I have my iPad Pro, and I said, what do you do with this? And right on the, uh, I've got to put my password. We'll talk about this in the next class. A-P-P-L-E-P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. 
Seven. Apple password seven, the P is capitalized in password. Don't worry, passwords are not relevant anymore, but we'll get to that next time we meet on season four. You won't need passwords much longer. You're not, not going to like what replaces them, but you won't need them. So this is the feature page right here. Now the next page that you can go look for something is in what's called your top charts. So this is available on all the apps. It's the top things people are buying. A lot of these top things people are buying are stupid. <laughs> are you familiar with the fidget spinners, the things all the kids are using nowadays? They actually made a fidget spinner app. And it's the number one free app right now for some ungodly reason. I can't even figure out why that app exists. But they made a fidget spinner app. We've got one called Goat Simulator. It simulates your life of being a goat. But they're broken into three categories. Paid, free, and top grossing. When you have a paid app, even if it is 99 cents, if it does not have at least four stars, do you waste your 99 cents? No, if an app does not have at least four stars and it's a paid app, don't waste your 99 cents because people do generally rate apps very fairly overall. Now, the next section, that's paid apps. And I want you to know paid apps can go from 99 cents all the way up to $999.99. The only $999.99 cent app I've ever seen was an app called I'm Rich. <laughs> what you would do, true story, you can still buy it if you want to, you pay $999.99, you would open it up and it would say, you are rich. Then it would say, would you like to buy an in-app purchase for another $999.99 and be, you are really rich. And that company made about $10 million in rich people buying that app. So you're all laughing, but you all wish you had that idea. Much like, uh, I wish I had that idea. But you have paid apps and then you have free apps. Now, do you get a free app? <laughs> if it's rated less than four stars. No, no, no. Why not? It's free. It's illegal. It's bad. It's throw it in the trash. So <clears throat> you can get free up if it's rated less than four stars. Because here's the thing. I'll give you an example. Netflix, which some of us in this room use, is only rated two and a half stars. Because some people don't like some of the content. It gets very political. But paid apps, I would never get a paid app if it's rated less than four stars. But Netflix is, is two and a half right there. But here's the interesting spectrum of apps. <laughs> Top grossing applications. Because... You'll see all of these top app grossing applications are free. They make the most money, but they're free. How many of you have played Candy Crush before? Yes. How many of you have paid money to play Candy Crush before? Anybody? Anybody willing to admit it? Thank you, dear. You are brave. Nobody else in this room is as brave as you are. Because at the height of its popularity, Candy Crush was making over $1 million every 24 hours. So statistically, a lot of you in this room did pay money for it. You just don't want to admit it. <coughs> Game of War, Clash of Clans, and Mobile Strike. Three free applications that all had Super Bowl commercials. Think about that. Free applications, Super Bowl commercials, they're making money somewhere. Now the next section, when someone gets a new app, or when someone gets a new device, they come to me and they go, they're like, hey, Rich, I got a new device. What happens to all my apps? And they're all in what we're going to talk about in the next class we meet in here. They're in the cloud. cloud. They're in the cloud. And every app I've ever bought before is available here. So like I said, I've bought about probably about 10, 12,000 apps over the years. And I can go down. Free apps, paid app. Now, that is actually only the oldest iPad apps. I could switch to iPhone apps as well. And it would show me a lot more apps. And the funny thing is the first app I ever bought, first two apps I ever bought, was AIM, AOL Instant Messenger, and AOL Radio. That dates how long I've had these devices, but you can go through and you can see all of these apps, and you'll see they have a little cloud next to them, and I can always re-download any app I wanted to go ahead and re-download. Now the last thing we're going to talk about in the App Store, before we move on to some actual apps, is something that is critically important. It does not matter whether you have an iPhone, an iPad, an Android, a Windows, a Mac, it does not matter. Every time your device pops up and says there are updates, should you do it? Yes. yes. There is no question. You need to do your updates the second they come out. Hopefully no one in this room was affected by what happened about three weeks ago. Nobody got ransomware? No. Because I had three or four people email me and say, hey, I got ransomware and they lost everything <laughs> on their computer. You need to make sure you do your updates. The main reason, and I'll tell you, I have a Windows computer downstairs. I was in the middle of some work. It popped up and said it needs to do an update. Now I was like, ah, oh, just lost all my work. But you know what? 
least my computer's not. So when we're talking about updates, when you have your software, you want to make sure that you do updates all the time on the software that comes up. When you see that little one showing up next to your app store, you want to make sure that you go in and you hit update and you keep your things up to date. But not only that, that you read what changes in your updates as well. I think that's an important thing. A lot of people don't read what changes in their updates. They just hit updates and it's done. Like I'll give you an example. Google Photos, which is an app I'm going to talk about a little bit more today and I've talked about over the cruise. They just put an update that lets you make physical photo books from your pictures. So I don't know why people would want to print out photos. That's a question for another day. But uh, if you wanted to print out photos, you can make physical photo books in there now. And you would not have known this unless you read the updates. Now, here is the thing. When you walk into an Apple store, when you walk into a Best Buy, when you walk into a cell phone store or anything like that, the apps on those phones, the demo apps on those phones, are very carefully curated by teams of hundreds of hundreds of people that say, this app and this app and this app and this app, sell a phone. I don't treat my apps class in that way. I'm going to show you the apps that I use all the time. I want to show you the apps that I use all the time, and unless otherwise noted, they should work across or have equivalence on all devices, except for my Canadian friend up there in the corner, because there's no apps that work on that thing. Uh, it's called a Blackberry. I'm sorry. Yeah? The feature app of the week is on the, fe on, the, on the front page. You scroll down on the feature one, and you'll see it'll say app of the week. Features? Like, yeah. Type of feature. Keep scrolling. Yeah? We'll take a look at that later. Uh, the free app of the week should be there. I'll take a look at it a bit later. I, I only look at it on the iPad only, but let's go ahead and let's get started with some apps. Now, there are two things that my mom always told me when you meet a group of people you don't talk about with a group of people. What are those two things? Politics and religion. So which two apps do you think we're going to start with? Politics and religion. Okay. So. We're not going to go that deep, okay? We're going we're gonna to keep it light. But I want to show you an app I used to trick my mom, and you can use to trick your children or your grandkids. You can say, Grandma went on a cruise, and she came back with a tattoo. The name of this application is Ink Hunter, and I used this application to convince my mom that I got a tattoo. I-N-K-H-U-N-T-E-R. And it's a really cool application because what it does is it uses something called augmented reality. The first few apps we're going to talk about are augmented reality apps, and this is only going to get bigger. Augmented reality, basically augmenting your reality. So if I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to do a tattoo, like say this boat anchor, what I need to do, do you see that little smiley face that's showing right there on the screen? Those three little lines, let me turn to, you got these three little lines that show right there? All I need to do is drag those three little lines on an object. Draw those three little lines on an object, such as my arm. Okay. I have to find a marker over to do this, and here we go. So you see that? And then you will see. <laughs> And I actually, I can move it, I can go in, I can go out. And my mom did not believe me. She's like, you didn't really get a tattoo. So I went up, same mark on my arm, took a picture by the pool. Took a picture in the ocean view. Took a picture in the theater. She about died. <laughs> because I was raised Jewish, and if you know anything about the Jewish religion, you probably shouldn't get a tattoo. Uh, so uh, I went ahead, and uh, she, so then she came on to visit. She's like, bitch, I want to see your tattoo. And I was like, oh, it was fake. Uh, but then I got my grandma, I, I did it on my face, and then I did a Mike Tyson tattoo on my face. Uh, she's like, no, you didn't! That's even worse than the other one! But that's a really cool app. It's called Ink Hunter, and I wanted to start with that one. But the next one is, anybody have, I brought one in case, but oh, everybody thinks mine's a plant. Does anybody have a dollar bill, a United States dollar bill? Anybody been to the casino? I brought a dollar bill, if anybody doesn't have one. but You've got one? Okay, let me borrow your United States dollar bill. Because I'm going to show you something really cool with the U.S. dollar bill. Don't worry about that. All right. So, we know that this is a dollar bill. But what if I told you it did quite a bit more? Now, this is what's using augmented reality. And the name of this app that I'm going to show you is 1600. It is named after 1600 Pennsylvania Lane, which is the home of 
president of the Pennsylvania Avenue, my mistake, which is the home of the president of the United States. We're not going to make any comments, so I'm just making a statement. Uh, <laughs> but what's really cool is this is called augmented reality. I'm going to take that dollar bill and watch what's about to happen. <laughs> The White House is more than a home for the president and his family. It's the people's house. So it's your house, too. And it's really cool. So I can go in. I can do all those different George things Washington just by using a dollar bill, which is really cool. I show you a dollar bill. Now, he gave me one dollar bill. I have a different dollar bill. This one actually uh, just came from debt zero because I left it in my pants pocket when it went through the laundry. So this is called money laundering. <laughs> And there's his dollar bill back, and that's how you, uh, that's how you make dollar bills, uh, do really cool things. But here's a very interesting app. I like to show some really cool apps, and then we're going to go into some, oh, rolling my sleeves up. Then we're going to go into some, uh, some more daily use apps. But I think what's really cool is people make fun of apps all the time, because there's an app for doing almost anything you want to do. So there's a TV show that I watch called Silicon Valley. It's uh, kind of like, we've all seen The Big Bang Theory. It's HBO's version of the Big Bang Theory, based in Silicon Valley, where they make apps and different things like that. And on that TV show, they developed an application called Seafood. And what you could do with that application is you could point it at any type of food and would identify what that food was. Sounds a bit too good to be true, doesn't it? But it's really cool. What I can do is I happen to bring up something from the crew mess to show you this, uh, and this is a hot dog. So if I were to take a picture of this hot dog right here, it would tell me it's a hot dog. Now that is actually really quite impressive, because what's cool is a TV show made up a fake app, and then they took that fake app and made it a real app. But then I can scan something like some Oreos, and it will say, not hot dog. <laughs> it is a fantastic app for identifying photos of <coughs> hot dogs. Now, this sounds like a joke, and it was a joke last week. But here's where things start to get really cool. When life imitates art imitates life imitates art, a company that you might have heard of called Pinterest, you ever heard of Pinterest before, made their own version of that app in a week after that came out. And you can actually, inside of the Pinterest app now, you can open it up and take a picture of something, and it will determine what that is a picture of. <coughs> so if I go in, I open up the camera, and I take a picture of, say, my no button, and it's going to send that up to the cloud, and it's going to figure out what that is. Now, why I think this is very interesting is in the very near future, a lot of this is going to be cloud-based. How many of you have ever taken a picture of something just to search it later? Imagine if you take a picture just to search it later, but instead it could go ahead and it can actually search what's going on live. I think this is really cool. And we're a lot, there we go, what do we got? Oh, God, what's it say? Pinterest, yes. Uh, it thinks it's a watch for some reason. But I can go in and I can see all these different things. But it's, it's inside of the Pinterest app. And you just go in and you can take a picture of something. Now, let's see. Anybody got some? Like, you, oh, she got a fancy watch. Yeah, that's a fancy watch. That's, that's a swatch, isn't it? So you take her swatch. And it's going to go around and it's going to actually figure out what it is. But here's what's really funny is they actually took a picture of a hot dog. And it said it was a hot dog. And they tweeted it out to the people who made the show. But it's really cool that life imitates art, imitates life. And we've got... A gold Rolex. <laughs> High five! <laughs> Please, go sell that to someone. <laughs> but that's where it gets really cool. But let's, I've, I've shown you a bit of kind of far out there augmented reality apps, but I want to show you one that I actually came across uh, in Nevsky Prospect the other day. I need to find the picture real quick. Uh, here we go. So I came across this sign in Nevsky Prospect. I'm sorry to go back to politics. But I came across this sign. And I took this picture, and everybody, I posted it on Facebook, and everybody said, well, what does that sign say? 
Does anybody in this room speak Russian? Okay, good. So we're going to not know if this is right or not, but what's really cool is this next step I'm going to show you is really mind-blowing. Imagine if you could take your phone, point it at anything in any language, or your tablet, point it at anything in any language, and it would tell you exactly what that thing said. And this is an app that you've probably all heard of before, but just so you know what it said, it said, you have cool country. But it actually translated from Russian to English. Now, this is an application that you've heard of before, but you probably didn't know it could do this thing. It is called Google Translate. Uh, you, have to download the you have to download the dictionary, yes. But what's cool is, so I've got it going from Russian to English, and if I go ahead and I hit on this little camera right here, then I can go in and I have this card, which is in, uh, this card's in Russian, and it says, all, all do you like? Please leave a review about this restaurant. Thank you for your honest opinion. And you're like, okay. Is it doing a good job? And I never really knew before, but here's the great thing about this card. It's in English on the back side. <laughs> so it's actually, uh, when you get home, please share your opinion of Russian vodka room number one. And it says, please leave a review about this restaurant. That's not bad. Thank you for your honest opinion. All do you like is a little off, but what's really cool is I can actually go in and I can translate from English to Russian, from Russian to English. As my friend up here said, what you do need to do is you do need to download the language beforehand. So let's say you happen to be going to uh, Belarus. You'll see next to the Belarus language, there's a little download button. Oh, there you go. There's a little download button right there. And I can't believe what they speak in Belarus is Belarusian. I was having a discussion about the language in Denmark the other day, and someone said it was Danish, and I said, that's not a language, that's something you eat for breakfast. Uh, they didn't find that very funny. I had to remind them I was from America, and then they were okay. But I can go in, and I can translate anything, like I happen to know a bit of Spanish here and there. I could say, that looks good. Hola, mi llamo es Ricardo. Yes. Doesn't like when I do it on the microphone. Oh, okay. Hello, my name is Ricardo. Oh, she's now English, English. Uh, I can say, ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? I have very limited Spanish. Where is the library? But then I can say in English that the library is on deck 9 and 10, I believe. Identificar un inglés que la biblioteca está en la cubierta nueve y diez, creo. I don't speak much Spanish, but I speak a little bit. When I get in the elevator, when someone speaks Spanish in the elevator, when the door opens, I go, uh, Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Means, Please stay away from the doors. <laughs> That's my Spanish, but that's a really cool app. It's called Google Translate. It's free. It's available on all the different platforms. But it's using augmented reality. It's using artificial intelligence to really figure out what's going on across all of your devices. Now, another app that's really cool. I love this app. I'm going in Copenhagen to see a movie. And the problem is, if you see movies in the movie theater, your drink is like this size nowadays. So what do you have to do, like 35, 40 minutes into the movie? You have to go to the loop. Great application called Run P. <laughs> Tells you during a movie when you can go run and pee. Simplest concept. So let's find a movie. I'm actually going to be seeing Pirates of the Caribbean. Let's go to the next movie I saw. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen a movie in a while. Uh, what's the, one? the last one I saw was Beauty and the Beast. So I've got Beauty and the Beast. Give it a second. Okay, continue to pee times. So, I have four pee times during the movie Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> and pee time number one is 36 minutes in, two is 56 minutes in. Now, the 56 minute in is the recommended pee time. <laughs> but I didn't need to go until, oh, that was a recommended pee time as well. One hour and 29 minutes in, after my giant drink, I was like, okay, it's time to pee. So I go in, and 
it actually vibrates in your pocket when it's time to pee. I'm not sure about that at all. That, I'm not sure about the intelligence of that, but it vibrates in your pocket when it's time to pee. But I can actually read what's going on while I am peeing. It is called the synopsis. Uh, that's a great, uh, great little trick right there. The name of that one is called Run Pee. Next application I want to show you. How many of you tried to learn a foreign language before? Yes. Now, what's the number one company that comes to mind when I say learning a foreign language? Rosetta Stone. What's the number one most expensive way to learn a foreign language? So the guys behind Rosetta Stone, I, I used to not be able to show this app, but now I can show this app because Celebrity No longer has a partnership with Rosetta Stone. They made an app called Duolingo. Some of the original guys behind Rosetta Stone and it's like Rosetta Stone, but it has one major difference. It is free. 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 And it's actually almost put Rosetta Stone out of business. It's actually very, very interesting. So I can say I'm a beginner. <laughs> and I want to learn some Spanish. Uh, and it's Duolingo, D-U-O-L-I-N-G-O. -O. And if I want to learn some Spanish, I'm just going to say, which of these is the boy? El niño. Which of these is the man? El hombre. El hombre. The woman, la mujer. La mujer. The girl, la niña. La niña. Una niña. Una niña. A girl. One more, la mujer. La mujer. The woman. I think, oh no. Oh, I said, I said the woman. Oh, I said I woman, sorry. But what's really cool is you can learn, I have Spanish, but you can learn all kinds of different languages. Sorry, what's the French school? Duolingo. D U O L I N G O. I'm going to show you the different languages you can learn. My app, D U O, it's right on the screen. D U O L I N G O, but here's all the different languages I can learn Spanish, French, German, Italian, Portuguese, Dutch, Irish, Danish, Swedish. Danish, oh, that breakfast sandwich. Uh, <laughs> Swedish, Turkish, Esperanto, Norwegian. There's two I'm trying to learn for the ladies in the dining room uh, Ukrainian and Russian. So far, I've learned a little bit, and all they've said back to me is "yet." I'm not quite sure what that means, but uh, that's all I've heard back there. But it's very, very cool. I can go in. The name of this application is called Duolingo. And here's the interesting thing. Why is it free? Because it is run by the world's largest human translation company. And when you graduate from Duolingo, you can become a part-time human translator. You translate contracts and different things like that. because. As you saw with that little card, human translation is always better than uh, Google Translate, but Google Translate will definitely help you in a pinch. Now, there's another thing that we have that we need to translate all the time, which is every single one of these ports, essentially, other than like one or two of them, have a different currency. You got the Swedish kroner, you got the Danish kroner, you got the Russian ruble. Any of you have any Russian rubles left? I got a dollar fifty. I'll buy whatever you got off of you. Anyone want to sell me 3,000 Russian rubles? Good luck exchanging them outside of Russia. Have I got some rubles? Buy them for a dollar? No, oh, okay. I have 500 Russian rubles. I'm not going back to Russia until next year, so I have 500 Russian rubles. Uh, so, when we're talking about converting, we probably all have a currency converter app of some sort, right? But this is an app that will convert anything. Anything. It's called Converter Plus. Now, I've used it for currency recently, but I can go in and I convert, so you know, I have to spend some dollars, and I've, I've spent, uh, I want to know, 100 US dollars would get me, oh my, 5,651 Russian rubles, or 837 Norwegian krone, or 100 Bahamian dollars, which is just the American dollar, uh, or 100 Bermuda dollars, which is just the American dollar, but you can go in, and you can see all of these different currencies and conversions, and they have currencies for all over the world, and it will update the currencies, but it does a lot more. You know, sometimes you'll hear the captain come on at 10 o'clock in the morning and go, boom, boom. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Captain from Nagasamrit. I wanted to let you know that since we left the port of Russia, we have gone 417 nautical miles. What does that mean? So I can type in 417 nautical miles, and it tells me that's 479 miles. Or, um, I, I don't have Columbus selected right now, because I'm American, I guess. Uh, oh, or 772 kilometers. So I can go in, and I can see all these different things. Now, this isn't the same app. I can also do temperature. 
I am American. I do not want my water to freeze at zero and boil at 100. That is much too easy. <laughs> I want it to freeze at 32 and boil at like 212 or something like that. But I can go in and I can put in any temperatures. I can also put in speeds. So I asked one of the engineers on board, I said, how fast do the elevators on board move? Now, according to most of your comment cards, they don't. <laughs> but uh, I said, how fast the elevators on board move? And he goes, uh, they move at 35 feet per second. And I said, uh, oh, 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 okay. Well, we go in and we can do that. And that's really cool. I can figure out the 35 feet per second is 23.86 miles per hour, just to give you the, the simple metric in that. I've never seen an elevator move that fast, but I say they can do it. Tip calculator, mortgage calculator, all kinds of things you could ever want to know about all of these different pieces of information. Now, I've shown you a translator and I've shown you a converter, but do you know the number one language in the world that we need to translate and convert sometimes? What's the number one language in the world? Chinese. Chinese. No. Try again. Mandarin. Mandarin. No. Someone's going to say love. Ugh. Esperanto. No. Unfortunately, it is math. Math is the universal language of the world. Numbers are the universal language of the world. It's not a spoken language, it's math. Roman numerals are numbers and different things like that. But here's the thing. When I was going through school, my math teacher, I used to say, now remember, I have an engineering background. I used to say to my math teacher, why do I need to know math? And me and my two sisters had the same math teacher. And she would go, you need to know math because you're not always going to have a calculator in your pocket. <laughs> And now we do. So she can't use that excuse in the kids anymore. But here's what's really cool. This is a cool app. It uses augmented reality, uses converter, uses language translation to solve my math homework. It's called PhotoMath. I want to show you this because this is actually showing me where a lot of things are headed. So if I open up PhotoMath, 3x equals 9 will be x equals 3. 4x plus 7 equals 346. x equals 339 over 4. 3x plus 7x plus 42 equals 342. x equals 30. Any teachers in the audience? What are you going to say? Well, no, not cheating. What are you going to say? <laughs> There's something you have to say if I just give you the answer. What do you have to say? <laughs> Show your work. Guess what? <laughs> and that, my friends, is how my sister passed college algebra. Uh, <laughs> but I think that's a really cool one. That is called uh, PhotoMath. I need to keep that. I use that every single cruise. That is called PhotoMath. But here's another one that's kind of an augmented reality thing. I'm going to show you two in a row that are very interesting that are kind of augmented reality. This one is called Car Finder. <coughs> very simple concept. All it does is when you leave your car, you say, I parked here. And then when you leave the place you're going to to figure out where you parked, you take your camera, you put it up like that, and you get a big ugly red arrow over where your car is parked. <laughs> it's very, very useful if you go to Disney or you go anywhere like that. I don't have a car because I work on a ship, so I use it as ship finder. When I go out, I write, <laughs> I parked here, even though I didn't park, uh, Captain parked, uh, but uh, I, I write, I parked here, and it tells me exactly where I parked when I get back. But, okay, that'll tell me where I parked, it'll show me direction. But how do you navigate? Let's say you go out in Ford. How do you get around in Ford if you, if you lose a tour group, if you don't go on a tour, if you go on a different thing? How do you navigate with these devices? Here's what's very cool. It is very rare that I add new applications to my apps class, but this is an addition today, uh, and it's going to be an addition currently, because when something gets added, something else has to get removed. This is my favorite new application, and my assistant, I, I, I told him this at lunch, I said, I said, Rolando, you know, you did something that very few people do, I go, you actually taught me something. I was a big fan of Google Maps for many years. I'm still a big fan of Google Maps when I'm in my home country. But when you're out and you're about, you really don't want a data wrong. You don't want to use all the data on your, on your data plan and all those different things like that. There's a really cool application that has turn-by-turn -turn navigation for walking and other things like that. It is called Maps.me. Maps.me. Very cool concept. So what it does is it downloads the maps and it can be used offline. So it can be used without an internet connection. It has points of interest. It has everything like that. So we're going tomorrow to W. Can somebody help me spell word? W R A R N E. Oh, you got it. I don't. It doesn't have it. Uh, word of Monday. 
uh, R-O-S-T-O-C-K. It'll probably be inside of the Rostock map. Uh, let's see. Strasse, Ritzville, I can't pronounce these places, I'm sorry. Um, but when I go in and I zoom in, we'll just go Rostock real quick, I can hit download map, and it will actually download that map, and I will have that map to be used offline along with navigation. That's what's really cool. So I have the map along with the navigation for that map, so it will actually give me a really cool idea of what's going on. The name of that one is called maps.me. M-A-P, I'm not going to let it continue on my location. M-A-P-S dot M-E. It's hard to show when you're not someone, but here's the cool thing. It works in airplane mode. So you don't even need to take airplane mode off. It actually works inside of airplane mode, which is crazy. You can add multiple <laughs> waypoints. You can mark where the ship is. You can do all that. And like I said, I started using it about a week and a half ago. It's a free application. It used to be like a $10 application. Then they started adding some little things inside of it for search and stuff like that. And in places that don't have great cell phone service, like Central America and things like that, that is actually a bigger app than Google Maps, which is what's very, very interesting. It's a bigger app than Google Maps in places like that. Now I have, uh, I have two or two, three more apps to show you. I want to show you. Let me pull that off the screen real quick. And I want to talk about food. Let's talk about food. I like food. Do you like food? <laughs> so this is a cool app. It's called Epicurious. Have you ever heard of it before? It's a cookbook that's for your, it's for all of your devices. And you can go in and you can search for anything. So one day, the executive pastry chef, he calls me up and he goes, hey, Rich, he goes, I need, uh, I need a recipe. I go, you're the pastry chef. He's like, well, because we have too much of a certain food on board, and we need a recipe to do something with that food that's a dessert. And I go, OK, Bruno, what's the food? He goes, bacon. My first response is, you can never have too much bacon. <laughs> My second response is, OK, we have too much bacon. What we can do is we can look for bacon, and we can look for special types of things with bacon. Let me go ahead and get my filter, and I want to make a bacon dessert. And you're going, OK, but the first dessert that came up was bacon baklava. Absolutely delicious, bacon baklava. Very sweet. It only requires three quarters of a cup of bacon and three quarters of a cup of bacon fat. So uh, it's very, very useful. And I can go through, and I've got that, and I've got the menu right there. I don't know where this is, bottle of water. But I can go in, and I've got that right there on the screen. There are two more applications I want to talk to you about. One we're actually going to do a little bit of a game with later tonight. Uh, after the show, after the first show, and after your dinner, likely, at 9.30, outside of the entertainment court, we're going to be doing something called the Google Photos Scavenger Hunt. Well, it's actually just called the Photo Scavenger. You don't need Google Photos to do it. But um, what we're going to do is it's a scavenger hunt right on your own device. So you have to find pictures of, uh, well, I'm not going to tell you secrets into what you have to find the pictures of. Let's pick something weird. Uh, of a ring. There's not, it's not in there. And then the first person to find it, for the one, whoever gets the ring within that time gets a raffle ticket, and then we do some raffle prizes at the end. It's really cool. It's going to be at 930, not in here, but in the entertainment court. But what we're going to be talking about there and giving you a concept of is something called Google Photos. Now, we have one of our Google Photos class. We're going to look at Google Photos in two different ways. We're going to look at it in a very hands-on perspective. In the iLab, we're going to be doing a Google Photos class at 1030 on the next C day. So in the morning of the next C day, uh, that's only going to be about 22 people or so. But we're also going to do a very small segment on Google Photos within our cloud class. You know, I did about a 15-minute segment or so within our cloud class. But I'm sure this is something, if some of you have seen this commercial before, this is still probably my favorite commercial ever made. And this is a commercial for Google Photos. And what's cool is uh, I've got it right here. And uh, let me just play it real quick. See if you can find it. OK, just like that. Okay. Are you getting it? All right, take a picture of the center, right? One. Two. Three. So, ah, I missed it. Do it again. Ready, set, stop.
Take as many foot as you want without running out of space. Introducing free up space. Never run out of storage again with Google Photos. The reason I like to show this, this is the best app I've ever seen on, it, on any app store whatsoever. You will never run out of space for your, for your photo storage, because that's what takes up most of your space on your device. Uh, we're going to be talking about that a bit during the cloud class, but that's in about 15 minutes of the cloud class. The more intensive one is going to be the iLaunch at 10.30 on the next C day. We need to do another one the day after that. We can do that if there's enough demand for that. Uh, we'll have the sign up sheets up there. Uh, later today or tomorrow, uh, just so you know. But uh, again, we're going to have a small section of the cloud class. But the last app I always like to finish this with is a very interesting app. Um, and I like to do that because here's the thing. I've shown you a lot of apps. I haven't shown you any apps that cost money. They're all essentially free applications. But the intrinsic question is, is any application really free? RunP is sponsored by an overactive bladder medication called Merbeq. <laughs> Smart advertising. Duolingo is free, but it's run by a human translation service. Epicurious, trust me, those recipes recommend different brands of margarine and different brands of milk and different things like that. So the question is, is there such a thing as a free app? Yes, there is. I want to show you in my 20,000 apps the only free app I have ever found. And what is really cool about this free app is even if you go, okay, well, there's an app for the Red Cross. Let's just pretend now. There's an app for the Red Cross that lets you give money or a different charity or things like that. I personally will not give money to charity because there's so much overhead in charities that I don't do that. So this app is a free app, and I actually helped some of the people with some marketing and some design things on this app because I thought this was a really cool app. And this is the only free app I've ever seen. I'm just going to play you their intro video, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the app, and it'll be good for today. It's called Be My Eyes. You might wonder how blind people deal with everyday challenges. Well, normally the answer is simple. They're not that different from you. We play music. We go to school. We go to work. You get the picture. But sometimes the simplest things can be difficult, and we need a pair of eyes. Connect to that's where you come in. Through your smartphone, Be My Eyes connects the blind with sighted people to a live video connection. Simply choose if you need help or want to help by the click of a button. You can help just by installing the Be My Eyes app. And we'll notify you when someone needs your help. And if you're in the middle of something, don't worry. Someone else will step in. For assistance with this app. And there's a big problem at South House. There's only 2 million sighted people willing to help out. So that's, that's a huge problem because if you sign up, you might never even get a call for help. I've gotten like three calls for help ever in, in multiple years because that's a really good problem to have, is to have more people willing to help than that you need help. And it's a really cool app and it's really over the years. It's the only free app I've ever seen that's not really affiliated with anyone or doing anything like that. It is just about helping people. So I like to end on that note. We have at 1 o'clock on the next two C days, and here at 1 o'clock after uh, Copenhagen, we're going to be talking all about the cloud. And then afterwards, we're going to be talking about something that I think is very important. I don't mean to scare anybody. I want to mention this again. Um, the ownership of AOL and Yahoo will be fully in the hands of Verizon come June 8th. They have changed their privacy policy to clearly define that as of June 8th, if you have an AOL or a Yahoo account, they can delete all of your information with no legal recourse from your end in any way, shape, or form. Does that mean they're going to? No. Uh, if you know anything about the U.S. stock market and the U.S. world as a whole, the markets in the U.S. have been going up dramatically. The parent company that has now bought AOL and Verizon is the, one of the only companies that's going down. 
it's time to get off of that ship. Not this ship, the, the AOL one and Yahoo ship. Uh, and I'm going to talk about how to get to Gmail, but not how to just to set up a Gmail account, how to make sure you have a secure Gmail account, how to move your contacts over, how to move your calendars over, how to move all that different stuff over to your Gmail account, as well as some of you probably have Outlook.com or Hotmail.com. Before the end of this year, you probably won't have that anymore unless you're willing to pay for it. We're going to break all this down. I'm going to explain to you why, but I think the most important class is the one we do on the last day, which is called Gmail and more. We're going to be talking about Gmail and more. But today, we've got up outside in, celeb in the entertainment court at 930, we've got our photo scavenger hunt. Feel free to stop by. That should be quite an interesting one. It's always quite an interesting game. It's just photos and videos you might have on your device already. You find them, you get a raffle ticket, you get a raffle ticket. We pull for about five, six prizes at the end of the night. That's going to be at 9.30. Elsewise, my name is Richard. This has been All About Apps. we get got more apps coming up in later classes. Bye!